Hi everyone, Ted Wyman here with another edition of Jet Setting. Coming out of the All-Star break with a big chunk of the season left to go, the most important part of the season for the Winnipeg Jets. And uh, they are uh, had a very good season to this point, but it is getting down to uh, the real intense part of the schedule. And the expectation is that there will probably need to be some moves made to try to get this team prepared for the playoffs. Scott Billick joins me today. And Scott, uh, what are your thoughts on what direction the Jets are going to go in in the very near future in terms of the trade deadline coming up and perhaps adding some pieces to take this team into a position where it can contend for a Stanley Cup? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, you look at the fact there's 30 games left in the season. The Jets, according to, you know, a couple different sites have a, a higher than 90% chance of making the playoffs. And, and the Western Conference is wide open this year. I mean, even with the Jets not playing, um, you know, for the last, uh, you know, 11, 10 days now, um, they, it, nobody's really taken a big, you know, leap ahead of them. And Jets are obviously going to have some games in hand because of the player break and, and the all-star break that, that they're still in um, right now, at least the player break. They don't get back uh, to the ice till Thursday and they play Saturday as their first game back. But um, yeah, I mean, this year, it seems like because of how wide open it is, uh, because of how you know relatively good the team has been this season, been able to compete with any team that they've been you know that that's been put in front of them, um, it has to be an all-in sort of season. I I don't know what else you do, and we've talked about this kind of ad nauseum in, in the past and written about it. And so you're you're looking at a team that has expiring contracts in a couple of years, maybe losing Carol Dubois in the summer if he if he's not going to sign here. Um, uncertainty whether you'll re-sign Connor Hellbuck or Mark Shifley in a couple of years, um, you know. And, and then there's you look at the trade deadline, and we're going to get into that. Um, you know, there's a possibility to add some guys with term here, um, and 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 maybe keep that window, force that window to stay open. So um, this is a big stretch here, and and you know, the next month, or less than a month now, it's already February. 8th, trade deadlines on March third. You know, this is the time where this is all you're going to be really hearing about. At the same time, the Jets got to still keep it up on the ice. Uh, uh, you know, they're they're still second place in the division. The last I checked, um, and and or in yeah, in the Central Division and, and right up there in the West. I mean, you know, they're not going anywhere in terms of that as long as they don't go on a slump over the next month or so, which maybe change the whole direction of what happens, but. You know, given what the Jets have done with 32 wins now out of their 52, um, they're in a great spot here. And and so now you got to decide what this team needs. I mean, it, it's relatively healthy, the team. Um, it, you know, it, it, it's it's you got basically everybody that you would hope uh, would be there on opening night of the playoffs. Um, so now you can kind of focus in on what you need. And, and there's some names out there for sure that the Jets have been linked with. Um, so it, it's just going to depend, uh, on, on, on what Kevin Shoveldayoff sees the needs where, where Rick Bonus sees the needs if anybody gets injured over the next few weeks here. Um, but you know, for now, I mean, the Jets are going to be looking for in my opinion, a top six guy, potentially, um, a, a defenseman and maybe a third or fourth line center, um, coming in the next, uh, you know, in the next month into the deadline, if they want to really solidify their kind of their holdings, I suppose, uh, heading into the playoffs. Well, it's very interesting now. They're going to have to play better than they were in the weeks leading up to the playoffs. There's no doubt they did have a bit of a slump there. And, uh, yep. you know, fans are going to want to see more of the team that was playing great earlier in the season than that one that they saw just before the break. But you would assume that the break is going to give them a bit of that recharging that they need. And of course, as you talk about uh, the influx or the the addition of a player coming into the trade deadline could also give them a huge boost. Now, we've heard some of the names that are out there. Uh, there's some very big ones. Uh, we'll talk about those first. Jonathan Taves from the Chicago Blackhawks is somebody that's uh, apparently available. He's a, he's a Winnipeg native. I think a lot of people would love to see that happen. Um, that's one that we hear about. And another one we hear a lot about is Timo Meyer out of uh, San Jose, who's a player who still has, has a pretty big contract, and he still has a, a year left on that contract, uh, but would be potentially a big piece to come in for the future, not just for a trade deadline rental. What do you think the Jets would be willing to part with to get either of those guys? And how realistic is it to think that someone of that caliber could be coming to Winnipeg? 
Yeah, I mean, it's a great question. The fact that Kevin Cheveldayoff was in Tampa Bay last night watching, or on Tuesday night, watching the uh, the Sharks play the, the Tampa Bay Lightning there, um, I think is a telling. Um, uh, yeah, it's telling. I, I think it's telling because why are you out there scouting likely Timo Meyer uh, from the San Jose Sharks um, if you're not willing to, you know what the ask is from the Sharks. You know what you might have to give up. Um, you know what you might have to give up even more if you want to um, be able to talk to him and his agent and, and hash out a, a long-term deal before, you know, well, you know, assuming that a trade is in place. Um, so, you know, I, I, I think that Kevin Shreveldayoff is, is, is definitely looking um, to use up some of his potentially draft capital, um, his prospect capital. Um, you know, this is, this is something we talked about when we were in Buffalo earlier um, uh, earlier or last month now, um, when Kevin Shovelday sh- sat down with a couple of us um, uh, media members in, in a Buffalo hotel, and he, he talked about, I mean, I, I think the door, you know, the door is open to kind of, you know, if it makes sense and the fits there. And one thing we know about Kevin Shovelday off is the fit oftentimes means term. He wants some term um, left on these guys. And, and you know, the one thing with Timo Meyer, he's got one year left. On his deal, he's a pending RFA. His qualifying offer is $10 million. Um, that might scare some people away. I don't think the Jets would ever pay him the $10 million. I think they would hash out a deal um, if they were to trade for him. I don't know if they want him as a rental um, either. Uh, I don't think you want to give up that much. You could always just flip him in the summer again um, to a team that would want to be able to negotiate with him. Um, but I, I just don't see I think if you, if Kevin Chevrolet is going to pull out a trigger, on a trade for Timo Meyer, he's going to want to have him and have him for a long time and then sign him to a, a long-term deal. Um, so you have to look at that. I mean, that that's the big one. The Jets are basically um, in play at the moment for the biggest name left on the trade board after Bo Horvat uh, went to New York Islanders late last week. So, uh, but then, yeah, you talk about a guy like, you know, Jonathan Taves, do, do the Jets want a player of his, um, you know, caliber, on this team, I, I think he would make a, he, he's a great fit um, to play a third line center role. Obviously the, the, the ability to move up, let's say if Pierre Dubois or Mark Sheffy were injured at any point during the playoffs, um, you know, a ton of, uh, of playoff experience, three times Stanley cup winner. Um, you know, that, that stuff's easy, right? I mean, it makes sense. Um, what are the other guys? So is Luke Shen a guy you would look at um, out of Vancouver as a guy that would solidify your sixth position on defense. You look to Columbus and, and a, a guy like Vladdy um, uh, Gavrikov, um, you know, it looks like the Columbus Blue Jackets are, are, are definitely going to be sellers. I mean, they're in the race for Connor Bedard, which, you know, tells you everything that, uh, that you need to know about how their season's gone. Um, but then, there, you know, what about some other guys? I mean, Nashville's Nashville might not be, uh, might be selling as well. They, you know, they took a, it had a bad loss on Tuesday and, and, and it, it's not working out there. You look at a guy like Mikhail Granlund um, who has some term left on him. A centerman has some term left on him and, and, and kind of, um, you know, a replacement, I suppose, for, for Pierre Dubois if, if he's to move in the summer and, and, the, and the Jets don't feel that they can actually sign Dubois long-term. So I, it's interesting because I think internally, the Jets know what's going to happen with Dubois. Um, at least there would be a good kind of leaning one way or the other. Um, I don't think that signing Timo Meyer long-term affects any of that because, you know, th- there's ways to make cap room and hopefully the cap will go up um, I- across the NHL, uh, especially in the next couple of years. But, um, yeah, I, I, there's options. And the fact that the Jets are being mentioned with some of these, um, you know, other teams like the Rangers and the, and the Devils and the Flyers for a guy like Timo Meyer, uh, you know, goes to show that you know th- I think they're 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 looking big and looking to swing big um, this year. And and so th- that yeah, that's that's a big thing for this organization because other than Paul Stastny that came out of left field and Kevin Hayes in 2019, which was a flop, um, the Jets haven't really kind of swung for the fences um, at the trade deadline. And so if you're a fan, you know, watching what's going on, and I think you're excited. I think you're excited. Um, by the fact that, that this team is looking to make uh, a big splash uh, in the next month. 
So what does it take to swing for the fences, though, right? Like you need some oh. power, and and what you and know have, what yeah. what do they have to be willing to spend here? Is it a first you know first round pick plus yep. prospects? Are these prospects including Chaz Lucius, Rutger McGroarty? Are they including Billy Hainala? You know, um, Brad Lambert. These are our guys that are expected to make impacts in the NHL one day. Is that what it's going to take to get this here? And how willing should the Jets be to part with an asset like that? Yeah, I mean, I don't think it, it's any different than any other team that's had to spend, you know, trade some of their biggest prospects to get whatever or or or, or spend, you know, first round picks to get what they need. I mean, the Jets had to, you know, spend a first round pick to get Kevin Hayes a, a few seasons ago. And and this year, I mean, the, the value of a first round pick, um, you know, aside from Connor Bedard in this draft, the value is, is high um, because this is supposed to be, you know, it, it's slated as one of the better drafts and in quite a while one of the deepest drafts for second round picks early to mid second round picks could be um you know still worth quite a bit um in terms of you know what kind of prospect that you can find in 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 this year's draft class so um but you know i again i think you know to me i i think everybody's name is I, i'm not sure there's an un, untouchable on this team um in terms of their prospects uh and because, you know, it, what do you want? Do you want a Chaz Lucius in three years, four years? Who knows, especially with his injury re track record over the last few seasons. Um, you know, I think there is going to be some concern within the organization that um, this guy is, has challenged, is, it's a challenge to stay healthy um, after having shoulder surgery earlier this week or just, yeah, earlier this week, um, you know, to, to, to correct an issue that's, you know, he's had, ha he's had, he's had knee surgery. Uh, in 2020, he had to learn how to how to essentially skate and walk again. After that, he had uh, uh, and a season-ending uh, ankle surgery last season in his only year in college, and now he's having season-ending shoulder surgery in a year where this was supposed to be his you know prime developmental year. This is where he was going to go down and play the last little bit with Portland and 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 that sort of thing. So. Um, th that, that's a, that's an interesting thing. You know, do the jets, you know, say, Hey, yeah, maybe we just, we will trade them and, 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 and see where it goes. But I, I don't think that anybody's off the, even Rutger McGordy, who I think, um, a lot of people th thought was a, you know, quite a steal in, in the draft last June, um, <clears throat> is a, is another name, um, that I think everybody's going to want you know, if teams coming in are going to want these top prospects. And, and, you know, that'll also include Billy Hainala. Um, I, th I think uh, even a Dylan Sandberg would be put in there um, who has shown some promise already in, in his limited NHL time. So I, I think everybody's on, on the block here and, and, and there's nobody that, um, you know, maybe internally the jets, I, I just don't, I don't see it. If, if you're looking to land a guy like Timo Meyer, who's 26 point per game player, um, you know, has some familiarity with Nick Ehlers from junior played with Brendan Dillon and, Bre and, and Dillon DeMello in San Jose. Um, you know, you don't often get to sign a guy like this. And especially in Winnipeg, you don't often get a chance and potentially a chance to sign a free agent like this long term. So um, if this is something that they can do, I'm not sure that any price. Well, I shouldn't say that any price is too high, but I, I think that, um, you know, within reason, I, I think everybody's kind of available. Well, how often do you actually have a chance to say the Stanley Cup window is open? I mean, it's hard to say right. for sure that it is this year. They've got difficult teams in their own division. Colorado's still in there. Mm -hmm. You've got Dallas. It's going to be pretty hard even to come out of the Central. But it's a team that has some – it's built to do some winning right now, and it's got pieces in place that they've been building for years. They may not have those pieces together for much longer. We know that, right? right? But – uh uh, maybe you have to take a look at your window and say, this is when we got to go for it. And what better time you're going to hold on to those prospects, like you said, and then you're going to be rebuilding with those prospects in a few years. Well, you want to get something out of it right now. So, I mean, to me, if there's an opportunity to actually bring some of these guys in, you've got to do it now. And, uh, you know, and, and you hope that it works out, but I, I think Winnipeg Jets fans would like to see that. Uh, to have a team that's being very well coached by Rick Bonus, that has experienced players, that has an excellent goalie, has a defenseman who's playing at a Norris, a Norris Trophy caliber right now, top scoring in Mark Shifley and Kyle Connor and Nick Ehlers, and, you know, a good tough second center in Pierre-Luc Dubois, you know, really good uh, Adam Lowry as your third line guy. Adding pieces to that could make this a really 
strong unit. So, I mean, yep. uh, to me, I think this is one of those times when you got to take a shot at it. And, uh, you know, uh, do, do you see yeah. it being a, a realistic idea that the Jets could take a deep playoff run this year? I do. And I, I think, you know, this goes back to what I said earlier, the West seems wide open, you know, Vegas, who knows what's going to happen with Vegas. Mark Stone might not play again this year. And it doesn't look like he's going to have having back surgery. Jack Eichel hasn't been, you know, the player that they exactly envisioned him being so far, um, you know, one year removed, I, I guess, not even a year now removed from, from his neck surgery there. Um, you know, they have a great goalie in Logan Thompson, but you know, again, I, I'm, I, the Jets, I, I think the Jets view this as every team that they've put in front of them is beatable this year. And, and, you know, whether or not they've beaten them because they haven't been in Vegas yet. Um, you know, did they beat, uh, maybe they did. Uh, it's my mind was gone blank there, but they beat Colorado early on in the season. I mean, both teams were injured at that point too. So can't, can't really, you know, they lost Landis Cog, the Jets lost Nikolai Ehlers. Um, yeah, but, but my, the thing is, like, you look at the West and, 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 and nobody's really kind of set themselves apart yet. The Jets have beat the Kraken. They'll play them again next week um, here. Uh, you know, so there's some good teams. But again, this is a team that, that right now can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any other team in the NHL. Um, you know, Boston will be obviously the one, and Carolina will be the ones that you kind of look at as, you know, can they beat those teams in the East? But if they can already hang with those teams, um, okay, that, that's great. And then you add some pieces to this to round out this roster to perhaps put it over the top. And the other thing, too, is, you know, at some point, Kevin Sheldayoff has to shoot a shot here, right? He had the chance in 2018, and they went to the Western Final. That one may have came out, you know, a bit out of left field. It was a bit of surprise considering, you know, 2016-17 season where they weren't even in the playoffs. Um, the next year, everything kind of went together, and, and they went as far as they did. They had a great team. Um, but at what point, I and mean, if you're not going to do it now, with, like, I don't think Kevin Chevrolet, my point is, I don't think Kevin Chevrolet is here to see the next, you know, the rebuild or what happens with the prospects that he's drafted. And, and for his own job, uh, longevity and security, um, I think you have to go this year and try and make a push, try and get some, you know, you know, buy yourself a couple more seats. I know he has a contract, um, but, but if, if you don't go out this year, and take advantage of what you have. Um, I, I don't think that sends a good message to anybody involved in this. I mean, um, what are you supposed to do? I mean, every team, every year almost tries to um, tries to improve and, and try and get better. That's why the trade deadline is such a big deal um, because every team is trying to find that piece, whether it's a depth piece or a big, you know, a big swing um, to put themselves over the top. And and for the Jets. Um, you know, I don't think Kevin Chevrolet is here uh, to see Rutger McGordy or Chaz Lucius or Brad Lambert or any of those guys kind of turning um, to, you know, what they, they might, you know, become or what they're projected to become in the NHL. Um, if he's not um, aggressive and, 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 and is trying to win a Stanley Cup. So um, I, I think that at the end of the day, uh, I, I think Kevin Chevrolet knows that. Um, I, I don't think he's um, oblivious to, to to, to that and I think you know for himself I mean th this is the best year that you've had the best opportunity that you've had since 2017-18 and this time I mean you did see it that year coming as well but this time like I think like you know you're looking at it and you, you're not seeing big name teams um, other than Boston and maybe Carolina in the east that you can't beat um, so you got to go for it. They'd be pretty happy to get to Boston or Carolina, I think. <laughs> that I think would be so. successful, yeah. even if you didn't win the Stanley Cup. It would be right. pretty, pretty successful if you get that far. Anyway, Scott, great insight. And it's going to be very interesting to see what happens over the next month or so mm -hmm. with this team. Uh, I do see them making a move uh, that, that takes them in that positive direction. But they got to keep playing good hockey. And uh, Rick Bonus has to keep them on that path that he started them on early and throughout this season so yeah. scott uh, we'll be back with more jet sitting as the season goes on but thanks for joining me here today and thanks for watching you have been watching jet setting on winnipegsun.com